Hi, welcome to this brief introduction to TWIT, which is a uh, stands for Teaching Using Internet Technology, and it is a system for creating and using language exercises online. Um, it is a system that is uh, a little bit um, a little bit out of date now in its uh, in its imp uh, software implementation, but it is still very much unfortunately uh, uh, fairly progressive in terms of its functionality and its um, the ideas that are behind it. Uh, I uh, My name is Dominic Lukas and um, I co-created to it uh, almost four and a half years ago and uh, this introduction is part is, is first to show what is possible in it and also uh, to hopefully entice somebody to join in this as an open source project uh, which it has recently become. So uh, you can find to it uh, if, if you're watching this uh, at toit.glotalstar.com and uh, uh, you can download the full version uh, install it, run it, uh, do anything you want with it really. Um, you can also listen to a uh, uh, that is, you, c you can see that here, download it here, and then you can also you can read about how to install it here. Uh, you can also install the WebEdit CMS that is basically just a very simple CMS that accompanies to it and integrates with it, and it was used to uh, it is used to run uh, the current version of Bohemica.com, which is my website for all things about uh, regarding Czech language and Czech uh, culture. I did. Uh, I also uh, to it is implemented on there, including uh, over 800 exercises uh, for Czech, and I have used the same uh, the site when I was uh, teaching Czech as a foreign language at the University of Glasgow. Now, uh, if you want to know how to use it, then you can go to the uh, to it uh, dot uh, globalstar dot com manual or to it dot dominic lukash dot net manual, and then and you can read more about it there. And you can finally also listen um, to my a presentation I gave at Bar Camp Brussels in earlier this year, 2006, and uh, uh, and uh, hear a little more about the background and some of the ideas around it. But mo mo most of the things that I talked about there will be uh, uh, I'm hoping to sh demonstrate better uh, at this. Uh, uh, the screencast. So let's uh, start off by logging in as teach as as a teacher. So I've created an account called Demo Teacher. Password is Demo. So here we go. So when we log in, we have see a number of options. First, we have the Content Manager option, which means uh, which has everything to do with content. We can create exercises, view the ones that are already there, work with the dictionary and some other and a few other things. Uh, and then it's a student manager, which is where we can define teaching plans, which basically means assigning tasks and exercises to students. We can correct and review students' work, and also send them comments by email. It's a very sort of primitive function, the last one. And then finally, uh, there's a bunch of options for setting up a user account, uh, creating your user accounts here, uh, creating uh, user categories, process account requests, and of course, changing our settings and finally we can set up uh, a number of message boards uh, that are part of the system as well uh, here we go so uh, let's first have a look at some of the exercises that are on there so if we click on here view edit exercises and uh, here we see a list of exercises and here's a little search option you see a number of categories for exercises you can, com you can combine several of them uh, and then search. You can search by type, but most of the is best search by all, uh, and also by uh, by teacher. Uh, what I really want to show you is a category which is called samples. That's right here, and so we're going to show all these samples in here. And here's an example of of all the tweet capabilities. So we look at preview, and here we go. Here we see that. So this shows all the types of exercises, all the types of uh, assignments you can create with Twit using a simple markup language that I will show you uh, as as I'm also showing you this. So the markup language here if, uh, uh, looks a little bit like this. Uh, here uh, you can see basically 
there are shorthand tags and full tags for every every option and it basically is based around square brackets uh, a fairly simple tagging system that is used on uh, and that is used on many many um, systems so for instance to create something like this a simple text field you just type in these two square brackets and then auto this will automatically be created it will look like this or if it can be styled like that it also looks more like a textbook then uh, if you enclose word yeah, or if you put them around a word or you enclose words and you, you get something uh, that looks like this it's it will uh, be exact really long as long as the, the word is long and then the word will also be the correct answer so then the system can pre uh, can pre correct uh, things and then you can do the same things for endings uh, you can specify here are these little things. You can specify number of points you get for the right answer. You can specify how long it should be. So if, if you're creating a test and the word is only three letters long, but you really want it to be uh, the field to be longer so that the students cannot guess what the word is from the length of the field, you can specify that and so on. You can specify um, a number, uh, an empty text field with just the points and ju and the length right here. So that's very simple. Next uh, up is uh, I'm this in a slightly different order here, but so you, you can create this is the bottom one a text box for essay type questions, and you just do that by typing by putting in the uh, the width and the height, so that in other words the columns and the lines. Well, here's some more interest other more interesting options. So you can you, can, uh, you can use the the pull for multiple choice. There are basically three ways of doing that. You can have a pull down uh, option or you can have a multiple check or you can have radio buttons like that uh, so those are the basic options it is very if, you, if you've ever used uh, hot potatoes that's very similar to that uh, except of course hot potatoes only creates uh, plain HTML files with JavaScript in them now to make the text a little more uh, a little more interactive we have a number of options here as well uh, and that is uh, well. Sorry, let me backtrack quickly. There's one thing that I forgot to mention. It's one of the differences that makes it different from uh, hot potatoes is this is this option for the essay type questions. And one of the features that is unfortunately not fully implemented yet, but uh, that is uh, on the in the works or at least <laughs> conceptually, uh, is um, the possibility of the teacher correcting the essay type questions directly into the text, basically writing in code into the text. At the moment, uh, you can students can write long essays, but the teachers can only uh, write comments underneath them. So that will be something that uh, hopefully will be implemented soon. And and uh, and <coughs> uh, and the technologies uh, the technologies are progressing all the time. Where other people's uh, our ability to work with those technologies. So let's look, uh, as I promised, at some of the things uh, that you can do to spruce up your text. So you can, for instance, very common, you want to show a student an example of what what they should what it should be looking like, what what they're doing should look like. So here's you can just create a field with a sample text in it, um, and that's done simply by putting a percent sign bit before it. You can create a quick um, hint that displays like JavaScript alert. Very again, very simply done with uh, 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 quotation marks before, and uh, so th then you can also we do you can do a JavaScript just like hot potatoes, but uh, a JavaScript self-correcting field. So the correct answer is text. I type in text and click somewhere. As this I get this checkbox if it's correct. Uh, I can use this little thing. So it's a very it's the same thing. I can do this little nice little thing. Uh, uh, have the clue displayed somewhere else. So, for instance, right now I can only do it in a text box, but um, a text area rather. Um, the tags for it are a little, little, little more complex, but only in the sense that I have to specify where the radio buttons go and so on and so forth. Now, here's a nice little feature that you won't see in many uh, systems and that you can link up directly to a dictionary. So, here's a word uh, uh, that I click on it and it will look it up in the dictionary. It won't find it because this demo site uh, I incorrectly transferred the data in it, so all the check, uh, all the check UTF-8 characters, or you can see they were converted into two uh, 
uh, into some uh, into either two uh, question marks or some strange something strange. So so that didn't work out. But if it if that word had been in there, uh, which in this case it's Mali, which is small in Czech, and if it's in the dictionary, well, it's not even in the dictionary. Uh, but if it were, then we can find it out. Find it out. If we have the access as a teaching access, then if the word isn't there, we can create it. The nice thing here is that you can, using this these tags, you can uh, have a di display of different word and then have the dictionary form in there. So that's very good for languages with lots of uh, inflection. And uh, so this is pretty much it. Uh, I th I think. Um, that that can be done using these simple using these simple tags. So let's uh, go back and uh, uh, see what the results uh, how we how we could create a quick exercise and then assign it to a students. Uh, by the way, there's also a nice little feature here is that it's very common, but it might be useful for a language school. For instance, if you click on for printing, uh, you can get you get this uh, printout of the same exercise. That can be then printed out on a piece of paper and given to students. So you don't always you don't only have to um, create exercises uh, that can be just done online. So we'll go back to the main menu and uh, let's see if we can create an exercise or or unit. So first let's create an exercise and then uh, we can have a quick look how to create what a unit of exercise is. Although we will not go into that in in, in in a lot of detail. Uh, so there are a number of choices uh, for exercises. I most of the exercises in the system at the at the time at the moment were created using this universal exercise with using the tagging system I just showed you. Uh, but you can also use these preset uh, uh, ex um, sort of wizard uh, guides. So for instance, if you want to have multiple questions and uh, and you can you have these a few choices then you get a little something like this and you just type in your question which choice is correct what the choices are uh, and so on and so forth so we're, we're not gonna do with that really here the one that uh, cannot be as easily done um, using the uh, or but uh, using the tags although it is definitely doable is the one using crossword puzzles uh, so you can, here you can choose how many rows you want, and uh, and then just basically type in. Unfortunately, the styling here is 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 wrong, but you can then type in the letters that you want to have there, and then it will create a crossword puzzle. This is a, a very sp specific to Czech crossword puzzles, or uh, or maybe Central European crossword puzzles, where they usually hide a word somewhere in there in that in the pattern, so that you can choose which of these columns is the word which is called Tajenka in Czech but you will definitely uh, um, it, it is not compulsory to do that alright um, so let's go to this universal exercise what I can do is create a simple find a simple text let's say on Google News so say demo Exercise. It's at the difficulty level. This is, at the moment, is hard coded into it because just for the purposes of, of, uh, uh, of Bohemica, but it can be changed. I can assign give tasks or descriptions, but I can also write that directly in here. This thing takes any HTML that I, that I want, and I can simply put brackets around, square brackets around different words and then if I save it then you see uh, the text immediately created these little uh, these little free uh, uh, fill in, uh, fill in the blanks or close uh, or fill in the blank uh, spaces so okay, let's go back to editing and then let's say I want to also, and then you see that all the tags have been filled out by uh, by the system, so that I can then change them if I want some more. So uh, then to do a, a simple pull down, multiple choice, I can enter it like this. 
I'll put this little, um, uh, in, put this, uh, the regular parentheses there to indicate that that's the correct answer. And then and save that. And we have this pull down menu. I can to show students how to uh, what I'm asking them to do. I can do this. And then they see that I want them to fill these words in like so. And then later on what I can do is I can ask question. So question one, question two, question three. And I just forgot how uh, what's the best way. And I can have a multiple choice uh, I can just put the pound sign in there and have one for each of the questions and then uh, oh one of the things I did not I don't have a plan on here is is an HTML area uh, system uh, so I cannot uh, I need to put in HTML basically, but normally uh, it, it is there is a version of it with the uh, HTML area built in, so that of course uh, the teachers usually don't have to worry about things like putting uh, line ends and stuff like that. But, but you see here, here I have these little uh, check boxes, and you can imagine what they would look like normally. And here it also shows me how many points. So uh, it's one point uh, for each of these, but I can change them to zero because they're the wrong wrong answer also zero here but also I'd say I can give students points for not checking in checking the box so if I uh, so I have more variability there okay. and of course so these are the sorts of questions that the teacher would uh, pre-correct um, so we don't so then once we're done with the editing so I, it's easy to go back and forth so that the system fills out the the simple tags and then we can do more with it and once pe once once you're more comfortable with these with the tags and it's uh, easy to remember how they work you can just choose a bunch of categories or even add a new category say finish and uh, uh, I'm just going to put it under samples and have it as samples so this is as, so this is how simple it is to create an exercise using using to it um, the other there's another type of content here and there it's under exercise, but it's really content. Uh, it's called. It is called the content. So that could be used, for instance, for grammar uh, explanations for any text that you want. A nice thing about it is that if you if you give it the same category, it will uh, be linked to in the uh, um, in in the exercises. Students can uh, students can uh, click on related grammar explanations for the exercise. Now, of course, the, the most powerful for displaying all of these multiple uh, choices is uh, our units and uh, we're not gonna sorry uh, we're not gonna assign uh, we're not gonna uh, create a unit at the moment but we're going to go back and view unit what, what one looks like so here we go view units so we can see what a unit would look like when you we we preview it uh, one more problem is oh the pictures are showing up uh, so this is the first page of a unit oh so this is a bunch of exercises together that uh, create one one page and uh, so we can see what, what one would look like here that, that one only has had one page but this one has multiple pages so you can go to the next part and so, and just preview the exercise. You can see all these exercises were created with the Intuit, so you can see it's, it's some. <laughs> unfortunately, all the characters are, are gone uh, during the during the transfer because I was too lazy to go back and do it again with the proper encoding. But as you can see, it's easy to put in pictures, colors, and all of these things. These were all done by my colleague Yitka Kaurova uh, at some point. Uh, all right, so so that's what units look like. Uh, when you want to edit the unit, so let's choose one of the more complex ones here. Uh, you don't need to select any more exercises, 
and then you see this is what it looks like. So you have a bunch of exercises, and they're in sections, which in this case they are recreating uh, p pages out of a out of a real book, and then you can move the sections up and down, and the exercises up and down within within that. And if we had added more exercises, we have a list, and then we can just add them to whichever section we want. So we can go back to our main menu, and now we can test what that looks like in interaction with the student. Now, one, that's one of the most important differences between uh, to it and some of the other, uh, well, some of the other systems uh, out there. I mean, there there are things such as hand coding, uh, uh, either doing flash exercises or hand coding. Uh, JavaScript exercises, which I guess few people do it anymore, but that was quite popular some years ago, or using something like Hot Potatoes to create um, uh, JavaScript uh, simple JavaScript exercises. But most of these uh, do not provide for any interaction between the teacher and the student, which is really where the learning takes place. And then on the other hand, and then you have systems like uh, Blackboard or uh, Moodle, which do provide the inter some of the interaction. Um, but it's for language learning. It is often the wrong kind of interaction, and it, and it is, and their abilities of exercise creation abilities are are very very limited, and they often just rely on some you know Flash whatever content is imported in Flash and things like that that are not very really uh, they're, they're good as a more interactive and singing and dancing textbook, but they're not really good for they they don't really enhance the learning as much as the interaction with the teacher. So let's uh, so to it does something very simple that I'm uh, and it, it was created out of my frustration at not being able to do it in other uh, other systems. So it is not anything hugely re revolutionary, but it just tries to recreate the conversation between a teacher and a student, or this or interaction, the learning, in the learning process. So uh, let's just make an assignment of a single exercise. Uh, we could. Uh, Preview one, see if that's one we like. Oh, oh that's, there really isn't one on here. Uh, so I'll just close my tabs here. Uh, how about uh, an alphabet? Oh, that's that's too difficult. Ex By the way, that that exercise had um, yeah, exercise had uh, sounds in it. So let's just do something very simple. Doesn't uh, doesn't have to be doesn't have to be very complicated. So you can just assign this simple exercise. Let's check that it is, does what it. Yes, that's fine. Uh, well, actually, no, that's probably not the ideal exercise. Sorry, I should have selected one before <laughs> we started. Uh, yeah, this one. This is this one will do. And then we can also answer questions. We can have these two exercises. We can make. Well, we can do a bunch of things with them, but we really want to make an assignment. And here we go. You can describe that assignment. It's a demo assignment. Now we can either force the student to do them se sequentially, uh, so that they have to first do the first one and the second one, and the order can be created here. Or we can just choose them to select an exercise. We can limit it by date, when it, by when it has to be con uh, completed, and so on. But we can even create a template using these exercises. But we don't need to do any of that at the moment. We just can go on and. Uh, don't have to worry about that, and just choose a student. Normally, there would be a list of students, and one of the weaknesses of of Tut at the moment is there is no easy way to to group students. Uh, uh, there is there there is just just a germ of a of an idea for that. Um, so that, and then we can uh, we can move on, and then either as a student to complete it immediately the minute they log in or we can set a date when it appears in their account or we can ask, even ask them to f for it to appear only after they have completed an assignment with number you know, 32 or there's something that had already been assigned to the demo st to the demo student so we just go for after login and we can write a few comments so do do this please all right and then we're done so now we log out and pretend to be a demo student. Has the same password as a demo teacher. There we go. So let's see if we go to assign exercises. Here we go. Here we have a demo assignment, so we can look and 
look inside and here we have these two uh, exercises these are the comments this layout is very 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 dated uh, and that was one of the uh, before development stopped uh, that was one of the things that was going to change at some, uh, and, and still needs to change so we have this exercise here so we can answer a few questions don't have to worry about what we put in there go we can save the answers for later and once we're satisfied with them we can send them to the teacher of course now this was all developed before Ajax I mean some auto save some auto save feature now in the days of Ajax would be very nice and we go to the next exercise and we have a uh, uh, again a long side fortunately I didn't choose any exercise that show the pre correcting feature uh, but that is fine. We'll just have to deal with it as it is. So then we go to the back and log in as demo student, demo teacher, uh, and then we go to correct review students exercises, uh, and we don't see any, unfortunately. Uh, demo student. Uh, it's pretending to have. Uh, uh, oh well. Here we go. That's one of the reasons why this pro. Uh, uh, why this program needs more development. Oh, here we go. Uh, how did that? How did that happen? <laughs> um, well, I guess. Just go through here and show the plan for student and then here we have this so demo assignment we can work on it and see correct it so we have the first one oh actually it was a self-correcting exercise uh, so we see we see uh, that this one that these were all incorrect of course because we didn't pay any attention and then we can say which ones were correct and choose for instance how correct they are which is a very important language because sometimes particularly when we're asking people to make a sentence and the students could make errors such as uh, add just basically accents that are not relevant necessarily to the exercise but still maybe we want to have them reflected so it may not be yes or no so we just say it was 90 percent this one uh, and the other ones were just we can say zero and then say well this was no good, which is of course the usual things that we probably don't want. Uh, now again, uh, in with uh, services like Audio, um, we can also uh, voice record uh, our comments as a teacher, but uh, when we were developing that, that wasn't even on the horizon as a technology, and also the internet wasn't as fast as it is now. So uh, there's a thought for if somebody would like to join in the development and code in that a little bit so we can send that off of course I just mentioned that the internet is much faster now but we're <laughs> waiting for our PA our server uh, to respond oh come on uh, I'm recording this in uh, England and uh, the server is in on the west coast of the United States somewhere let's try again oh that was better and uh, here we go, we can do the same thing here. So hopefully in the future it will be possible for the teacher to directly uh, comment on the text right here, but at the moment just has to make a decision like that and then write the comments uh, in here. Okay. And okay, now it's fine. And then the teacher can later review it. Uh, here's another thing that, <laughs> that needs to be put in is that so the teacher can review their corrections and change them. Uh, and, you know, have a similar sort of save and send to student. Uh, so this is what it will look like to the student. We can try that and go back to the demo student. And go to see your results. And uh, here we go. We can have a look and review.
view these results. Again, uh, what's missing here is uh, is some sort of a link in for Skype or uh, a scheduling, uh, possibly, so the teacher and student can schedule a, a time to talk about it and maybe record the results of their discussion. Uh, but the student, students can, and that can be done at, at any point in the system, create a note uh, for themselves. And so uh, it could be a site-specific note. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. A new site specific notes, okay. And that is so what is this? More notes. And hopefully that has saved it. Close this and then we'll have uh the students will ha can go and review their notes later if in their notepad hopefully what is this so you see the linking this is this is very much a uh, uh, this is very much something in the uh, in the uh, in the sur in its infancy but there's an idea the other thing of course students can visit all the message board that have been assigned to them here's just some message message boards that I have put up a long long time ago uh, and that actually are working on Bohemica at the moment, um, and then of course the, the, the nice feature that is still sort of in its germ uh, is that the students can create a vocabulary. So not only can you, uh, we don't have any pre-created vocabulary list, but uh, you can browse a dictionary like this, and if you want to create a vocabulary list, you can find a, a, a an English word, for instance. I think we have bread. Uh, so I can just say these words. I can say, oh, I haven't created a new vocabulary, so let's say food. And uh, here we go. Bread, these two, and we can have these, add them to our vocabulary food. There we go. And then, uh, Probably water will be in there, and uh, oh, it's both both water and watermelon, so you can both okay. And then we, if we say uh, use vocabulary, then we have this little nice little sort of self-testing thing. So we have the check words here, and then we can type in the English words and see if they were right. No, that is not water. But let's see what it, oh, that is bread. This one will be water probably. Well, no, definitely, <laughs> of course. And there you go. So, so it's a very simple thing. Again, uh, before the days of sort of uh, of nice uh, JavaScript uh, libraries, and so it's very primitive in the in its execution. But it's the right. It's it sort of gives you the right idea what what all of this could become, and uh, that kind of brings me to the end. Uh, but uh, I want to mention that. As you see, this is you know, to it is pretty much ready for very basic usage. You know, so um, you can set it up for uh, a language school with a bit of customization, and you can set it, or you can just set it up for you and your friends. Or, but it is still short of a uh, of the ease of use and the the f the, the, the feature uh, set that would be ideal for. An application, and it also very much shows its its age. So uh, this is, as the as the front page uh, states, really as much a, a demo as a as a call uh, for people to join in and maybe help with the development. My uh, hope is that uh, the Tuit could become a plugin for Drupal, which is a great content management system. I'm at the moment converting Bohemica to Drupal, and uh, if, uh, if if to it became a module or rather probably a series of modules for Drupal, then it would leverage a lot of the uh, CMS functionality its users uh, uh, 
uh, man user management and, and session management and all these other things that unfortunately uh, were just um, too difficult to, uh, to do in a, in a project of this, such a limited scope as, as to it. So uh, I'm going to end with this and hope hopefully uh, this was an interesting demonstration if you're, for those who are interested in using to it for themselves and maybe uh, with any luck it will also inspire somebody to join in and uh, and uh, push the development along a little bit because, as I said, it has uh, stalled at the moment and um, it, it is an open question with how soon it will resume and to what extent it will resume. So thank you for listening and watching and goodbye.